In this video, we're gonna cover GameCube emulation on the Xbox Series X and S version of RetroArch. Welcome back to my updated GameCube tutorial for the Xbox Series X and S. Now we've got some good news and some bad news when it comes to GameCube emulation on Xbox. Well, in, on RetroArch in general, really. But it appears that as of right now, the GameCube core is not being worked on and hasn't been updated in a bit. Now for some of the good news. With the release of RetroArch version 1.9.9, the GameCube core has been reverted back to the earlier build instead of the nightly build, so controller regressions are no longer a thing. We also now know how to fix multiplayer support within the Dolphin core, so that has been implemented into this video. So while most of the video remains the same as the last version of my GameCube guide, there are new sections in it worth taking a look at. But let's go ahead and get that core set up. Now before we could get started playing GameCube games on our Xbox Series X and S, we need to install RetroArch onto our consoles. So if you haven't done so already, refer back to my How to Install RetroArch guide. Link will be in the description below. And be sure to pay special attention to the part about expanding your dev mode storage, as well as the advanced setup section and how to access your Xbox's internal SSD near the end here, because we will be using that. Next, we're going to need to download my pre-made Dolphin-Emu folder to put into our RetroArch system folders for everything to run on Dolphin. Without this folder, there are things that just will not run. So link in the description below to this one and just get it downloaded. And once you have it downloaded, it is in zip format, so just get it extracted. And we should get a result that is a Dolphin-Emu folder. And inside there will be a folder named Sys, filled with all of our stuff. Now the last thing we're going to need to get GameCube games up and running on Xbox Series X and S are GameCube games. So if you have a physical collection of GameCube games, you can dump them using a modified Wii or GameCube and the program CleanRip. And formats supported are going to be GCM, ISO, NKIT. So if you want to compress them, use the program NKIT. Uh, GCZ is a compressed extension that's used on Dolphin, so those also work. Unfortunately, when you use NKIT, it does leave you with these ugly uh, file names. I never bothered going through and fixing them, but whatever. But once you have this Dolphin Emu folder downloaded and you've sourced some GameCube games, we just need to put them onto our Xbox. The Dolphin Emu folder needs to go onto the internal SSD in your system folder for RetroArch, and GameCube games can be stored either on USB or the internal SSD. But go ahead and access your Xbox's SSD. If you followed my advanced guide, you made a network share for your development files folder. Go into Windows Apps, find your RetroArch folder, System folder, and drag the Dolphin Emu folder right on in. And if you want to store your games on the internal SSD, you just need to back out of the System folder, find the Games folder that you created, and drag your GameCube games right on in. But for my purposes and to save space on my internal SSD, I'm actually going to store my GameCube games on my USB flash drive. So I'm just going to drag them right there. But just give it a time to copy over, and then once it's done, we will continue. But once you have your Dolphin Emu folder placed in the RetroArch system folder and your GameCube placed where you want to store them, we are ready to move on to the Xbox. Alright, so if you're using USB, make sure you got that plugged in, and then boot up RetroArch. And from here, we're free to begin loading up GameCube content, so one method of doing so is to go down to load content and choose your GameCube games directory. So if you're using the internal SSD, they'll be under S, Program Files, Windows Apps, RetroArch Games folder, and then select your GameCube folder, select a game, choose the core, tell it to run. If you are using USB like I am, all you need to do is go down to E, choose your GameCube games folder, press A on it, Select the core and tell it to run. I'm really not a fan of this method. I don't like navigating so many menus, so what I like to do instead is make a game's playlist. And my preferred method of doing so is to go back out to the main menu, scroll down to import content, do a manual scan, and for content directory, choose your GameCube games folder. Again, if you have them on the internal SSD, they'll be under S. Program files, Windows apps, RetroArch folder, Games folder, select your GameCube games folder and tell it to scan this directory. If they're under USB, it will be E. Choose your GameCube games folder, tell it to scan this directory. Now for system name, press right on your D-pad to fast scroll down to Nintendo and find GameCube. 
And for default core, press right on your D-pad, scroll down to Nintendo, and find Nintendo GameCube Wii Dolphin. Make sure scan recursively is on if you have your games separated into subfolders, and then start the scan. And once that scan's completed, you'll have a new GameCube games playlist here on the left. And then from here, you can just scroll down, choose a game, tell it to run. Now, if you are running from USB, it will take a minute for games to load up. It all depends on the speed of your USB drive, so just be patient with it, and your game should start momentarily. And there we go. That took about two and a half minutes for it to load up Need for Speed Underground here. Other games are a lot quicker. This is just one that I know can take a while, so I figured I would use it as my demonstration. So for those of you looking to get GameCube emulation up and running on your Xbox Series X or S, that is the basic process. Thanks to RetroArch version 1.9.9, reverting back to that original Dolphin Core, we don't have any of the issues that we saw in 1.9.8, and it just makes me happy. But let's go ahead and talk about some of the advanced core options available to us within Dolphin. So going into our RetroArch quick menu, we could scroll down to Options, and our first option is EFB Scale. This is your internal resolution slider. On Xbox Series X and S, many things can run at very high internal resolution, but if you start to notice some lag that wasn't there before, just bring your resolution back down, but you can crank this up pretty high, and it just looks really good in a lot of games. Do remember that even though you could crank the internal resolution up pretty high, RetroArch is not outputting at 4K resolutions currently on Xbox, so even though you're running at a higher internal resolution, you're still only outputting around 1080p, I believe. Skip log level, and let's move on to CPU clock rate. This is the clock speed of your emulated GameCube CPU. For the most part, you will not need to touch this, but there are a number of GameCube games that cannot achieve full speed on Series X hardware. And in that instance, you can lower the emulated CPU speed down to try to get full speed back out of it. This does come at the cost of frames per second, but not having audio glitches is worth it in my mind. Next up, Render, I leave that on Hardware, Fastman, leave on, DSP, HLE, leave on, JIT, leave on. Just skip all that stuff and move down to Language. If you need a language other than English, you could choose it here. Widescreen, this is for Wii games. Widescreen Hack, this will try to render your games in a widescreen implementation. Unfortunately, on this build of Dolphin, it's just kind of stretching things into widescreen instead of doing the hack for certain titles. So mess around with it, see what you think. Progressive Scan and PAL 60, Sensor Bar Position, Wiimote, that's all Wii stuff, we're not going to worry about it here. Next, Audio Mixer Rate, you can change this from 32,000 up to 48,000 for better audio quality. Negligible Performance Hit, so go for it. Shader Compilation Mode, this would be great if this actually worked, we could turn on freaking synchronous Uber shaders, have a great GameCube experience, but unfortunately they don't work on the Xbox or RetroArch version of Dolphin at all, so we're stuck with the synchronous shaders. This does mean we are left with stuttering the first time a new effect is introduced into the emulation, so that's just unfortunately something we have to live with because we don't have access to Uber shaders on RetroArch Dolphin. Next we have anisotropy filtering. I've noticed that this can cause issues in some games, so go on a game by game basis. You can turn this up to 16x if you want to, but there's some games where it will cause display issues that I found, so just be aware of that. Leave these next options on, disable EFB to VRAM, we don't need to worry about that, that gets set per game. Same with all of this stuff actually. Uh, leave GPU texture decoding off for now, this has caused some games to break in my testing as well, and hasn't really been that beneficial on RetroArch Dolphin. Next up, wait for shaders before starting, this will pre-compile shaders and make it take longer for games to start up. But again, it has caused issues in my testing where it will make certain games that have worked flawlessly not work, so I just recommend leaving it off right now. And same thing with force texture filtering. Next, load custom textures. I'm going to make a dedicated video for HD texture packs because they involve a bit more setup that I don't want to put in the basic setup guide for GameCube. So check my RetroArch playlist for that. Next up, Internal Cheats Enabled. There will be a dedicated video for this in my RetroArch playlist. Again, this is a bit more in depth than I want to go in the basic setup guide for GameCube here. But this will be for those of you that want to have dolphin cheats or patches and is really useful for Twilight Princess actually, so I recommend checking it out. Texture Cache Accuracy. This uh, can be set on a per game basis due through the dolphin INIs. Don't need to worry about it. And our last option is OSD Enabled, and this is set to on by default. So 
when you first start up a game, you'll see yellow messages appearing at the top of the screen. If you don't want those, you can turn this off. But that does it as far as core options are concerned. If there's a game that you want to have specific settings for and other ones you don't, you can save them as a game options file here within the Manage Core Options tab. But now let's talk about how to fix multiplayer support on Dolphin. Thanks to Pizza Parody and Taco Dave for showing me how to do this. That way we can bring it to all of you, that way you can enjoy some Smash and other multiplayer games on GameCube to your heart's content. So the fix for getting multiplayer working on Dolphin again is actually really simple. All we need to do is access our RetroArch saves folder. If you followed my advanced setup guide for RetroArch, you're able to access your saves folder from your Xbox SSD through your computer network, or you made a file share even, so I'm just going to go in here. We're going to open up the Windows Apps folder, we're going to go into the RetroArch folder, and we're going to find our saves folder, and we are looking for this user folder here. This is your Dolphin folder. This is where all of your Dolphin saves go. So we're going to go in there, and now we're looking for the config folder. Enter there, and now open the Dolphin INI. And we're looking for the section that says SI device. So as you can see, SI device 0, which is player 1, is changed to 6. But SI device 1, 2, and 3, which is port 2, 3, and 4, are all set to 0. So to get multiplayer support re-enabled for these controller ports, all you need to do is change these from a 0 to a 6. Then just save your Dolphin I and I, and you can close out of everything. And then when we go back into RetroArch, we can load up a multiplayer game. And just a quick demonstration here, we're going to go into Smash Brothers versus mode. And there we go, we are able to control both Player 1 and Player 2. And if I had more controllers hooked up, definitely Player 3 and 4 as well, but there we go, There's that's how you get it fixed. And then you are able to just enjoy all of your multiplayer games once again. Again, thank you to Pizza Parody and Taco Dave for showing me that process. Now one thing I would like to make note of here for anyone that uses the PPSSPP Core. If you are playing a PSP game and close it and RetroArch does its crash like it always does, when you load back into RetroArch, the driver might have reverted itself to OpenGL. If that has happened, make sure to switch it back to Direct3D11 before trying to run GameCube, PS2, PSP, or Wii games, otherwise they will not work. So after playing a PSP game, come into Settings, Drivers, and change the video driver back to 3D11. But that's going to do it as far as GameCube emulation on the Xbox Series X and S is concerned for basic setup. Again, the Dolphin Core currently is somewhat abandoned, so until someone picks up that banner, this is just the best it's going to get on Xbox for the time being. But as always, if updates come, I'll be sure to make a new video about it and pass it on your way. But thank you all for watching today's tutorial. I hope that it has helped you out getting your GameCube games up and running on Xbox Series X and S. But now, if you could all do me a huge favor, be sure to hit that thumbs up or thumbs down button, just depending on how much you like today's tutorial. And if you haven't done so already, hit that sub button so you can see when new videos go live on the channel. Lots of updates constantly coming to RetroArch, and we try to keep these videos up to date as best as possible. If you'd like to further help support the channel, you could also check out that join button here on YouTube or the Patreon link in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. A little really goes a long way to keeping us up and running and bringing more update vids just like this to you as well as all the other random content I like to make. Big shout out to all of our current backers. You are all amazing. Thank you so much for the ongoing support. Just champions, rock stars, amazing. Can't say it enough. Thank you. But that's going to do it for this one. So until next time, my wonderful internet peeps, you all stay awesome and we will see you back next video.